We got back-to-back -back car side reviews today. I just got done reviewing the Two Faces of January, which was a total pile of shit. Um, thankfully, though, I have a good film to talk about, which is The Imitation Game. This World War II flick stars Benedict Cumberbatch as Alan Turing as he attempts to crack the Enigma Code. I don't typically watch award ceremonies because, frankly, they're ridiculous. There's like 20 of them a year, awarding celebrities that already have millions of dollars with plaques and trophies and awards and tote bags with iPads and gift cards and you name it. It's the only line of work that's like that. It's basically the only profession that has that many ceremonies in a year. You don't see a garbage man's gala. You don't see a construction worker's ball where they hand out plaques and awards and they film it on public TV. I'm getting off topic. My point was, regardless of my thoughts, Benedict Cumberbatch, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if he won some awards for his uh, performance as Alan. This harkens back to A Beautiful Mind starring Russell Crowe, but much more believable for me. And this film is better executed. It's a nice back and forth between what's actually happening in the war. We get to see some ships sink, we get to see bombings, and then it cuts back to our mathematicians trying to figure this out as thousands of people are dying every week. Kira, I don't age at all, Knightley is in this as well as Joan Clark. Then there's other great supporting actors from Matthew Good, Alan Leach, Rory Kinnear, Matthew Beard, Charles Dance, and Mark Strong. This is director Morden Tildum's first big picture from what I gathered on his IMDb page, and he knocks it out of the park. I don't think it's a perfect film. I, I'm not huge on the constantly jumping between uh, time periods, and this one does it quite a bit. It, it, it kind of sucks because you're really invested in a scene, and then boom! You're 20 years earlier in a classroom somewhere and you have to refocus and start over with the emotions and then boom, it hits you again. Now you're 40 years in the future. So there's a lot of that. I think if they would have just played it out, you know, chronologically, it would it would have worked just as well, possibly even better. This is based on a true story and I know those are always, you know, based on a true story. So I really have no idea how much of this is fact and how much of this is Hollywood fiction. But I, I feel like I actually was educated a bit about Alan Turing especially. I learned about his upbringing, I learned about his tough times in childhood, his sexual issues he's had, and just the way things were done in the 40s, 50s, and 60s. It's sad, it's funny, it's thrilling, it's everything I want from a movie. It hits all the notes, it doesn't let up, it's a solid made film, and it's a nice change of pace from all the shit I've seen lately. Taken 3. God, what a fucking mess. For a January release where they usually shovel a lot of the shitty films, this one was a nice surprise. Uh, it's an 8.5 out of 10 for me. It is based on a true story, which keeps it from a 10 in my book, because a lot of these films, uh, they are really good, they're really well done, but they don't have anything that like blows me away or is super exciting. They're just, they're just really well crafted. <laughs> 